Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, a free way to support the channel is by leaving a thumbs up, by leaving a comment, by leaving two comments, by subscribing if you have not already done so because all of that does help with Al Gore's rhythm. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. On-chain analytics provider Santiment has revealed more interesting data that could potentially serve as an indicator for another leg up in price action for Bitcoin. This is something we've been hearing about for the last three days, nonstop, consistently. Whenever we go over the price news, it's always about uh, where Bitcoin is going next. And 99.9% .9 of the time of the news that we've read has been that Bitcoin looks like it could potentially be trying to pass by its all-time high. Bitcoin's price is like down up right now from the last time that we spoke. I think Bitcoin's price was 58500 It's around 57900 It's like it's, it's kind of near where it was before, but it's still like down, if you will. Um, once again, I mean, even on Thursday, we also heard that this week now is supposed to be allegedly... The week that Bitcoin is going to have some fancy price action because we're supposed to be hearing about from a number of companies, according to New York Dig, that is N-Y-D-I-G, uh, some great, spectacular, wonderful adoption news, if you will. Um, a lot of the price news is relatively similar across the entirety of the board. Uh, why Uniswap's Uni could surge above $35. Ripple price analysis uptrend intact above 50 cents. Bitcoin price to hit 59k in in reverse <laughs> reverse in reverse head and shoulders. And Ethereum consolidates above 1750. Why a crucial break is almost certain. So across the board, every single coin, no matter where I looked, I only have these five up there because why the fudge not? Uh, basically, all said the exact same thing, that we are looking like we are going to do something spectacular and or amazing sometime over the course of this week. If it's going to happen, question mark, question mark, question mark, who actually knows? But um, I think personally that we are well overdue for some type of an upward price movement uh, because we've been around the same exact range, what is about two and a half weeks. And I know that's not a long time in, in financial terms, but regarding actual adoption that we've been hearing about on a daily basis of people who are getting into the Bitcoin space and buying up huge amounts of Bitcoin or even buying small amounts of Bitcoin, the companies that we've been hearing about who've been buying like half a million dollars or a million dollars in this pizza shop and that clothing shop and that toenail shop who has also purchased 1.5 million worth of Bitcoin. Um, it just seems like, you know, it's, it's time, if you will, but uh, the charts do what they will. Anyway, that's all the price news. It was all, once again, relatively the same. I don't think we have to go over it for, for an, an extended period of time because every single website is basically saying the exact same thing across every single coin. It looks like we're going to be moving up once again, so saith the charts. And without further ado, uh, let's move on. Next up, Bitcoin has time and time again proved... That it is the ultimate, oh, that's a bit strong. It says ultimate savior. That's a bit, okay. Of the world against the inefficient fiat systems and government agencies. Over the last week, the Turkish lira plunged another 14% against the US dollar, which resulted in Turks searching for Bitcoin in order to protect their wealth. For those of you who did not hear, I'm pretty sure this is exactly what I'm thinking of. In Turkey, I think their finance minister was just uh, fired or <laughs> let go. Because I think he basically enacted some type of a, I, I, I don't remember the exact thing that he did, but he did something that apparently the higher ups were just um, not too happy with. And I think he's the third one to be let go in like a year or two. So, you know, mm -hmm. over the last weekend, Google searches for Bitcoin in Turkey shot up to the roof, almost doubling as we can see a sharp spike in the chart below. That is a big spike chart for Google searches regarding the word Bitcoin. With the way Bitcoin has performed over the last month, the trust in the world's largest crypto is almost building up strongly at press time, Bitcoin, yada, yada. Um, so the news being is that apparently, according to this chart, and I'm going to blow it up in a second, is that Bitcoin is now the th world's third largest currency, um, the total value in circulation. Here's the actual chart right here. The chart is from Bloomberg Finance LP. For those of you who can't read the tiny, tiny, at the bottom, it says source Bloomberg Finance LP. 
Coin market cap, Deutsche Bank. Note, for Bitcoin, we took the current market price of the 15th of March, the 1st of January 2018, the 1st of January 2020, and the 1st of January 2019. Note, the conclusions would change dramatically if we looked at the monetary base, or M1, or M2, to define the universe of US dollars in existence, just the amount of cash coins printed appears small, as it does not include all the assets held in US dollars in deposits at banks. So here is the chart. Once again, I mean, just to, you know, kind of go over it. Here's Bitcoin's value in late 2017, 2019, early 2020, early 2018, and Bitcoin now. <clears throat> it has passed by the Japanese yen, the Indian rupee, the British pound, I guess once again, the actual circulating, uh, Brazilian real, and rupee, and and the only thing that's next is the euro and the US dollar. And Bitcoin basically has to double for us to pass by the uh, circulating amount of US dollars in billions, uh, which is not going to be impossible. <clears throat> and I think even more so it's going to be we won't hear about this in the news. We will hear about this in our news. And Bloomberg will report it and so-and-so will report it and Finance Finance will report it. But it will never be on your local news because I think that would cause a bit of a ruckus around the world. Um, so I guess the news is that people are still adopting Bitcoin. Uh, we have gone over the, the chart for many different currencies before as to exactly how much they're inflating, <clears throat> how much of or lack of faith people have in their fiat currencies the world is moving in a very weird direction and it's it's abundantly obvious it should be to you as well uh, what's happening um economically and all these other lees anyway so i guess the news is that fiat currencies continue to fail i just honestly do hope that in light of this constant news that we are getting i do hope that People within these countries are realizing that they can, once again, as long as you are legally able to do so, can legally get into Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies as a way to try and preserve what they have or just run away from the inflation of their country. Because I think crypto scares a lot of people when they first hear about it because I think, I don't know if it's brand new or if because it's digital, they don't know how to custody it or whatever the actual case might be, but... They're going to be really upset when um, their paper money loses all value and they realize that they could have gotten into Bitcoin earlier. Anyway, here's that chart once again for those of you who wanted to see it. And without further ado, uh, let's move on. Also quite popular in the news today, um, a senior official from the Central Bank of Nigeria has rejected claims that the bank has ever banned crypto. Uh-huh. This was reported by local media news outlet Today NG. The CBN official, Adamu Lamtek, reportedly said that the bank protected the banking sector from cryptocurrencies. It didn't ban crypto trading itself. I'm certain that this was one of the countries that came forward. Their central bank came forward and said that cryptocurrencies were banned. I am almost... They, I think they all did it at one point. And then try to retrace their steps. The clarification comes one month after Nigeria's central bank told all banks to immediately cancel their services for customers who buy, sell, or trade cryptocurrencies. It isn't clear what prompted the bank's decision. Their, their currencies are garbage. Their currents... Once... Okay. Um, if the U.S. dollar is doing bad and the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency and therefore by definition air quotes, the strongest currency on the planet, and it's failing, imagine what happens to the, did you see that chart? Imagine what happens to the other things that are already below the euro and the dollar and below Bitcoin and the Indian rupee. Just how, just imagine how bad that it actually gets. When the Indian rupee is in a top chart for the best performing or the largest currencies on the planet, now just imagine the other 180 other countries on the planet. They're terrified because they have, now this isn't tinfoil hat, this is just how money works. They rule through money. They create the money and they tell people this is the only money that you can accept or pay in. People have no choice. This is the paper that we print. If you print your own paper and it looks exactly the same, that is then illegal. You can get in trouble for it. You have to use our garbage that we give you. 
And when they realize that there's some sort of an alternative, especially I think it scared a lot of banks, personal opinion. I think it scared a lot of them because they did actually assume that cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin were simply going to wash away as another whatever you want to call it. And people would simply go, OK, well, let's go back to, you know, back to what they gave us before. But now that it's, you know, uh, survived, has lasted long and that we're getting Deutsche Bank and JP Morgan and Citibank and you know all the other names talking about the longevity of Bitcoin. They first of all, the banks realize that they should have gotten into it before, and I'm pretty sure they're really angry that they didn't buy into this thing when it was one dollar, two dollars, fifteen, twenty five thousand dollars. I'm pretty sure they're a little frazzled about that. But when you see your power fading in some sort of way, it it has a a, a, a profound effect 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 on you as a as as a leader of something. If you have been in power for 200 years within your country, you've had, you know, seven different waves of fiat currencies because they've all failed before, but you know that in the end, they still have to go back to you to buy that bundle of money <clears throat> to be able to use in 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 an actual, during the population. You understand what I'm saying? So um, this is why we saw that reaction once again. The, the cryptocurrency market fell at the end of 2018, not because I think the bubble had popped, it was pretty large for the other crappy altcoins, but it was because we had 15, 16 different countries every single week saying that they were going to ban it. Uh, people who were trading it were going to get in trouble. Do You You might not remember um, JP Morgan Chase. This is why I said it's very ironic that they're into crypto now. JP Morgan Chase released a report. I believe it was the end of 2017, the beginning of 2018, that basically said any of their employees who were caught uh, trading, buying, selling Bitcoin were going to be fired. <clears throat> and this included people doing it on their personal time as well. And I was like, that doesn't seem like it's legal. You can't, like, if someone's home doing something, you can't tell them. So um, I, I think it was a, a massive, once again, and also the reason why they let uh, futures go through was to be able for people to be able to short and bet against the market. It was all coordinated to try and destroy the market in some sort of way. Anyway, um, is there a quote here somewhere? Here we go. It says the Central Bank of Nigeria did not place restrictions for use of cryptocurrencies and we are not discouraging people from trading it. Lam Tech, who was quoted as saying today in Today NG, he said what we have just done was to prohibit transactions on cryptocurrencies in the banking sector. They knew what they were doing. You know exactly what you're doing when you go on TV and you say, our banks cannot use this. What do people, when people think of money, what do they think of? They think of banks. If the banking sector is saying they can't use it, well, gosh darn it, I, I know I can't use it as well. Unless you go and clarify on television. Because if you, if you know that, and I'm sure they knew that, if they go on TV and say these things, no further comments, no further questions, and walk away, the next day, they have internet access. They go online, they look online, and they see that the words that they said have caused millions of people in their country to kind of go, hey, what, what, what's going on? Is, crypt, is crypto banned here? And instead of having another press release six hours later saying, hey, you know, no, 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 clarity, it's the banks that can't use it, but you, the citizens, totally can. They didn't do that. It took them, was it weeks, months to be able to come back? And I'm pretty sure that's because people behind the scenes were telling them like, hey, we got to... We got to set it up because we got to get all the rules and regulations in place so that we can also make money as well. It never it it it, it it's it's it never has to do with the citizens. <clears throat> it's always the banks and it's always the money. It's always their money being protected. We have to ban crypto because our money and the system that we created is crumbling and falling apart. <clears throat> It's never, hey, let's actually protect our citizens. And that's why every single time that the SEC has done something, I'm like, well, it has to do with money. It's never to actually... <clears throat> I find it funny that whenever I actually um, have conversations like this, that's when my throat actually ends up acting up. I guess it's a... Um, I was going to say witchcraft, but that doesn't make any sense. You understand what I'm saying. Anyway, um, this is also it. Sources claim Nigeria's Bitcoin ban has been lifted. It's terrible. They, they, they knew exactly what they were doing and the timing of it as well. Um, so that's the Nigeria news. People are very excited or uplifted by the news that there was never a ban. There, there, there's no ban anywhere. I think like actually two countries have actually like outright banned it completely. Like you cannot touch this in any sort of way. Every other country who has claimed that there was a ban has then come out and said, oh, no, no, sorry. There was, ban? Remember India? 
People thought there was a ban for like 18 months, and then the bank was like, oh, no, we, we meant us, not you. You can still trade it. That's fine. They know what they're doing, and it's terrible because this pe- people lose faith <clears throat> and continue to lose faith in the system because politicians just continue to lie. Imagine they just to- imagine imagine if all politicians just told the truth like explicitly. And bankers, how much more faith we would have in them if they were actually for the people because they were elected and put in place by the people. Anyway, that's the Nigeria news. Um, let's move on. <clears throat> also in in wow, this is super mega popular news. The US SEC's lawyers have indirectly stated, and actually said it directly, stated that cryptocurrency exchanges are not violating <clears throat> I don't know why it's acting up now. That SEC lawyers, wow. The US SEC's lawyers have indirectly stated that cryptocurrency exchanges are not violating any guidelines by allowing XRP trading on their platforms. This was said by attorney Jeremy Hogan yesterday. During a court hearing that Hogan attended, Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn made a remark to the SEC's attorney that, based upon his theory, everyone who sold XRP... has has consequently sold illegal securities by extension. However, the regulator's lawyer... This is is killing me. (coughs) I can't help it. However, the regulator's lawyer reportedly pointed out that this is not the case. And they said, and I do quote, and this is what the SEC's lawyer said on record. He said, no, under Section 4, only Ripple and affiliates of Ripple could have sold XRP illegally. Hogan cited the lawyer, adding... Now, why is this super important? This means that the exchanges that delisted XRP two months ago were not and would not be violating securities laws if they relisted XRP for sale and began to sell it again. End quote. Here's the tweet for it. Here's the actual tweet for it. And I guess it's like a a video where this guy is uh, talking about it. The news basically is, for those of you who didn't get that, Is that every single crypto... So when we had indications, was it, it's been like three or four months now. I don't know the exact time frame. The SEC came forward and basically said that Ripple was selling uh, XRP illegally. Securities, blah, 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 blah whatever they, they, they had to say. Uh, cryptocurrency exchanges began to delist XRP, <clears throat> stating that they did not know the legal status. <clears throat> it's making me angry. <clears throat> saying that they did not know the legal status of XRP and therefore uh, had to delist it. So I will tell you what I actually think took place. All these major cryptocurrency exchanges have lawyers. They discuss with the lawyers. They discuss with the so-and-so. I have thought for a while and have kind of known for a while. uh, Many cryptocurrency exchanges and many crypto people within the space do not like Ripple or XRP for whatever reason. A lot of it has to do with 2016 and 2017 propaganda within the space. The same exact way, for those of you who do not know, when Ethereum first launched in 2015, 2016, the same exact thing for uh, XRP was said about Ethereum as well. But for some reason, it's stuck uh, with Ripple as opposed to Stellar or any other company who's working with banks. Um, And it's because of this that I think that it took them so long to actually list XRP on any cryptocurrency exchange. I think Binance was the first one. Like the actual first one to do it. And then they were kind of like pushed into the corner. Be like, okay, well, Binance is making so much money. So we have to also do this as well. So I think the opportunity for them to be able to uh, have a reason to delist it was whatever they needed to, to take it off. Because a lot of the people who started these cryptocurrency exchanges, it's not about decentralization for them. Once again, it's all about the money. A lot of the people, if you look back, way back, as to when these people got into the cryptocurrency space... <clears throat> They've had discussions before that they were able to buy Bitcoin for around a dollar, twenty-five dollars. Yeah, I, I bought my first batch of Bitcoins when it was around two dollars and fifty cents. So they they bet on the coins that they have, and they don't really care about the things that they don't have. So this is why even before we had news, I'm pretty sure, I'm fairly certain that the CEO of Coinbase has mentioned before that he likes Ethereum more than Bitcoin, or he sees the Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, growing to be a lot larger than the Bitcoin ecosystem. And this is why I think it was 2018, why every single time that a new coin was listed onto Coinbase, 
It was like 15 ERC20 tokens. And everyone was like, hey, can you add my coin? Can you add this? And they were like, yeah, we got it. Going to be adding 65 new coins. And 50 of them were more ERC20 tokens. So <clears throat> allegedly, as it stands right now, I assume we will be getting more news about this as the week ends up going on. I can only assumption that people are sending in massive amounts of letters to the SEC or asking someone because you know how people are, uh, basically asking for clarity. Because if we get any actual proper indication from a letter from the SEC or Hester Pierce goes on TV or has an interview and basically says, yes, the cryptocurrency exchanges can relist XRP, uh, the people who are behind XRP are going to lose their minds and force these exchanges. That's exactly the sound that they're going to make to relist XRP. Uh, but as it stands right now, it appears that the lawsuit is explicitly against Ripple selling xrp and not the actual exchanges which also then makes sense for what i was saying before i was like remember when all of this happened and they were like oh security sir and i was like well that's weird you let these exchanges listed for the past four years why didn't you say that four years ago it's still kind of weird that they allowed uh or rather just you know uh had the lawsuit against ripple after four years but that's besides the point so um xrp's price has like started pumping if you will it, it was going up really high last night and then it was a dip in Bitcoin's price. And I hate saying the word gravity for that situation, but you can see the actual pull down in the entire market and XRP couldn't uh, withstand the pull, as it were. Very popular news. And I mean, like, it's all over the place. Like, everyone's talking about it right now. So we'll see where this goes. Um, I have a very strange feeling crypto exchanges probably have known this news for a while, if not weeks and or months and just don't want to relist XRP because everyone in, in, in the crypto space knows each other. I'm not sure if you know that. And it's not, once again, tinfoil hat. It's actual just all these people used to work together. They've all worked together at Google, at Yahoo, at Amazon. And at some point, they left their positions. They moved into other fields. And a lot of them who got into the cryptocurrency space, they all worked together at some point on Bitcoin. They fell apart. I don't like Bitcoin. I want to make something better. And they moved into Ethereum. The people from Ethereum didn't like Ethereum, so they moved into Cardano. The people from Ethereum who wanted another way of thinking, they moved into Ripple. Well, the people who made Ripple after a certain point, they moved into Lumens. Like, they all know each other. They all went to the same schools. They all went to the same... And, and you can look it up. That This is news that we had years ago as well. So, at some point, there was a, a rift uh, between all of them and Ripple. And this is where we currently are right now. Anyway... That's the XRP news, because it was quite popular. And let's move on. <clears throat> Next up, the DeFi realm continues to grow every day with a total value locked hovering at around $45 billion. That is insane. <clears throat> of this amount, 9.2 million Ether, around, wow, $17 billion are locked away. Into various DeFi protocols, the amount of Ethereum constitutes roughly 8.2% of Ethereum's circulating supply, as pointed out by the team at Blockport. And there's their chart for that right there. I, I, didn't, I didn't make it larger, but here's the actual thing right here. Um, sure, this is also popular news. Uh, we're getting a lot more Ethereum news, a lot more than we previously did before. I told you that I assumed that it had to do with the fact that Allegedly, within the next couple of weeks, we are going to have, I think, the roll-ups update, which is like the batching of transactions uh, so that Ethereum can then mathematically have, I think, one between one to 10,000 transactions per second. We're very, very close to it. And this is why I think we keep hearing about more Ethereum news, that people are getting more excited about Ethereum. Ethereum 2.0 continues to roll out. But now the news is, or usually follows the trend of, that's great. There's a new update coming. What does that do for my money? And it comes down to the fact that uh, people are now looking into exactly how much Ethereum is locked away. Because the more Ether you have locked away, whether it be into DeFi or into ICOs or into NFTs or protocol, whatever other thing you kind of want to say, or staking as well, um, well, that decreases the circulating amount. And therefore, my amount that I have also becomes more valuable because there's less actually moving around in the ecosystem. Um, sure, 8.2% of the entire Ether locked into DeFi. Uh, we went over this number before. For those of you not looking at the screen, you can find out exactly uh, like the staking rewards for each ecosystem and also how much of it is actually staked in the actual protocol. And this is roughly the same number that we had before. 3% of all Ether is locked into Ethereum 2.0. 
uh, to be able to be staked, the staking reward is around 7.89%, etc., etc. cetera, et cetera. Um, Sure, why not? Was that 11%? 8, 9, 10, 11, 8, yeah. Cool. Um, I actually expected the number to be a lot higher. I won't lie to you. We've gone over Cardano's before. It is currently at 73%. I think last time we heard it was 81%. 81 or 84, somewhere around there, percent that was actually staked with Cardano. But if we ever get to a point where 73% of Ether is staked, the, the price is just going to go absolutely ballistic. Anyway, yeah, so that's the... Ether- I mean, the, the, there's, there's constant Ethereum news about uh, how much there is, where it's going, what's going to happen. But I guess it's because we're so close to all these actual upgrades. Um, listening to that podcast... I mean, it's a two-hour podcast. I, I, I finally finished it yesterday. The, the Tim Ferriss one, where he's talking to Vitalik. Like, apparently everything is imminent. Everything is going to be happening uh, relatively soon. We have a lot of things happening. Uh, there's a... a we have... Uh, um, s- no, we have Schnorr and... Oh, gosh, what is it? Schnorr and Taproot for Bitcoin. We have Rollups for Ethereum. We have Mimblewimble for Litecoin. We have... Oh, gosh, is, is, it, is it Mary? I don't know. Is it some, some woman name for Cardano. Uh... Maybe it's even Galgan. I don't know anymore. Cardano has too many upgrades. Um, what else is coming? There's another coin that also has another upgrade. So, like, we're all within that same time period of making the blockchain better. Anyway, that's the Ethereum news. I assume we'll get more uh, fantabulous news as time goes on. Should there be, you know, should this go up to 9%, we'll definitely hear about the amount of uh, Ethereum locked inside of it. And let's move on. Uh, Oh yeah, so that's actually that was actually all the news, if you will. A lot of the other news floating around was kind of a nonsensical news, if you kind of want to say that. Um, it says another Binance Smart Chain project, Turtle Dex. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Rug pulls with tokens worth two point five million dollars confirmed stolen. There's a lot of news about this all the time. Sorry if I just screamed into the microphone. Um, I never bring it because uh, not only is it ridiculous, I just assume or hope that people who are watching this channel have enough sense to not be in a lot of these projects every single day. And it's not just on Binance chain. It's also happening on Ethereum and many other uh, places. People are creating, whether it be the gigantimous balloon of NFTs and people not being able to resell these NFTs after they purchased them for $150,000 because no one wants to pay $151,000 for a JPEG. But there are tons of DeFi projects that are popping up all the time. And they usually claim after they pop up that, well, you know, Breadcoin isn't the one that is the greatest one. So we're going to fork it or make our own and call it Toast. And then Toast appears and people throw their money into it and then Toast disappears. They call it a rug pull because imagine you're standing on a rug and someone pulls the rug under you. You're going to fall on your face or fall on your back or you're going to hurt something that you didn't want to hurt before. And then they go, well, Toast is terrible. So I'm going to make Buttered Toast protocol. And people go, yeah, Buttered Toast is the one that I want to follow. And then that one disappears and then they go, well, we have Butter and Marmite Toast. And they're going, yeah, that's the one I want to follow. So this happens every single day. I just don't bring the news to you because once again, it's irrelevant to the news that we normally cover. And also, I just hope that people aren't into these projects because they're making tons of money and then disappearing. Do you know what this sounds like? What? Oh my gosh, that's crazy. It sounds like the ICO space of 2017 where all these new ICOs kept on popping up all the time. They made millions of dollars overnight and then they disappeared. We had constant news stories and I think the most famous one was in 2017, there was a, a guy, pseudonymous, you know, people only knew him on Twitter or something like that. Uh, I think he had, I mean, his protocol, his ICO had made, I think, $8 million overnight. And then people went to go check the website. It was gone. And then I think a couple of weeks later, people saw him on social media, like on a beach somewhere. And they were like, that's crazy. You can't do that. And I was like, you gave this random person who created an ICO on Twitter... $8 million. What did you think was going to happen? So this is why... I, anyway, um, so that happened. Uh, what's this one? Um, also, in this is news for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Um, CoinFloor, a cryptocurrency exchange in the United Kingdom, is taking some flack over a recent ad that allegedly took aim at pensioners. 
The ad talked about the benefits of crypto investing, though it has since been banned by national regulators. The ad has been deemed socially irresponsible and misleading, as according to official complaints, it did not address the many risks associated with cryptocurrency investing. In a statement, the Advertising Standards Authority claimed that the ad must undergo serious edits before it, it's played again to viewers. The statement read as follows. I don't have to read it. You, you understand. So the point is, this company put forth a, a an ad for cryptocurrency. I haven't seen it myself, but I, I probably know exactly what it's about. It probably had to do with the fact that uh, pensioners <laughs> are uh, losing money. They're going to continue losing money. And the pension funds around the world are losing tons of money, and they don't have enough money for the pensioners anymore. There, you didn't see me put on a tinfoil hat because it's actually true. You can look this. I mean, it's happening in every single country at like a rapid rate. It's 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 actually quite scary. It says U.S. pension plans warned that they will run out of money by 2028. Why Social Security and where how Social Security invests its money and why it may run out of cash really soon. Why is Social Security running out of money? So for those of you who do not know, um, this is why it is imperative in some sort of way. I don't care if you invest in crypto. I don't care if you invest in real estate. As long as you are investing in something that outpaces inflation or have some type of a backup as retirement money. I say this because a lot of people assume and we are told and have been told that when we were little, you know, you go to school, you go to high school, you go to university. After university, you find the job and you have that job for... That's right. For life. It's your job forever until you turn 60, 62, or 60. When, when I was a kid, I think the retirement age was said to be 60, and now I think it's like 67 years old. Of course, it keeps rising all the time because they want a a, 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 um, a workforce. That's the nicest way that I'll, I'll, I'll put it. Um, what happens is, is that you are expected to work until you're 60, 62, 65, or 67, and then basically ride off into the sunset in a, in a, in a you know, go, go live out your golden years on a beach. Um, part of the issue is, and many people don't know this, but you're going to know this right now. The system was designed, that system was designed many moons ago. Haha. <laughs> and the, the entire idea is, is that when you retire at 60 or 62 or 65, you're expected to go to a beach, go live on a farm somewhere and live with your cows and sheep or drinking a, a green, yellow, red drink with a sunset and you're expected to perish and or pass away when you are around 75. That's the entire idea of the system. So they tell you that for the rest of your life, you will receive money from the state, from the government, from your pension, and you can live out your best life. But they know that at that point, your bones are old and brittle and you can't really move that much anymore. And logically, you're expected to uh, fade away. And this happened for a very long time, but then science came around and we now live a lot longer. I'm pretty sure you've seen the videos online with the 92-year-old. She's dancing like this and they talk to these women who are 109 now and they go, how does it feel? She goes, it feels great. I'm actually going on a walk with my grandson earlier. We're living a lot longer. So that money now has to stretch out a lot farther. The idea for this system is that when you pay taxes, when you pay your money into the system, you assume that you're paying into your own little box. My name is Jeremy. I am paying this money for my taxes, and therefore you assume that there's a little Jeremy box, that when you turn 65, that you open it up and all this cash kind of flows out of it. Wrong. What happens is, is that you are paying money into a system that is paying for the current people who are retired. The issue being is that, a lot of issues, uh, young people now no longer have a, a full-time job. We are now into something called the gig economy. And many people, even if you have a normal behind-the-desk job, you usually have it for around two to three years. Your pension doesn't get to build up as much as it normally would have before if you had a stable job. We know exactly how the system works now. This is why we are all into cryptocurrencies, because we've seen the nonsense. So, you have a system. Not only that, not only are, uh, you know, are, are you paying into the system in this way, but people are getting a lot older. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure I must have mentioned this before, because it's one of my favorite things in the entire world. Um, the actual age of expectancy. So kids who are born right now, today, in this moment, because of current technology and of future science, uh, it is expected that their average life expectancy will be anywhere from 180 to 200 years. Not a joke, not making that up. You might remember uh, long, long ago, the average age expectancy for people 2,000 years ago was anywhere between 17 to 30. 
That was the actual age expectancy because they all had rotten teeth and all this other stuff and they were eating raw garbage. And uh, But as time has gone on, especially when our parents were young, their age, age expectancy was around 75. Our age expectancy, if you are alive right now, based on current technology, you can expect to live to be over 100, 120 years old easily with current technology and current medicine and current science. If their life expectancy is expected to be 200 and the people currently living right now, long story short, mega long story short, is that that 10-year period where you were expected to live your best life is now 40 years. There's not enough money to go around. The population continues to increase. So the money is getting thinner and thinner and tighter and tighter. And this is why they keep cutting this fund and cutting this so-and-so and cutting this. And people complain, where's my social security check? Where's my so-and-so? You know, why are things being delayed? Why am I making less money? It's because the system is running out of money. And everyone knows this. Well, rather, you know this now as well. So I assume that their ad basically had to do with that. You know, if you want a proper pension, maybe look into cryptocurrencies. Because the state is not going to be helping people for a lot longer. I think it's expected by 2050 that all the money from social and pension pension funds... Once again, look this up. This is not investment advice. I'm not telling you explicitly like, the money's leaving. Look into it yourself to see this as well. Because I want you to, you know, after you've heard something from me, look it up so that you actually have this information in your mind as well. The idea is that by 2050, the money's all going to be gone. So you have to find other ways. This is also, if you never watch documentaries on, um, I think I'm kind of slightly obsessed with them, about like, not just about rich people, but like wh what they do with their money, where they put their money. Like they are in current hyper accumulation of land, digital assets, and what's the other one? I can't remember the other one. The, 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 the entire idea is they're not making any more land. So they want to buy up as much of it as humanly possible. The idea is to always outpace inflation because inflation is ridiculous. So you want to always make sure that you're making tons and tons and tons of more money to be able to protect yourself. The entire point is um, the system is broken. Uh, people who made the system know that it's broken, but they you'll never hear them say that it's actually falling apart. That's why I think once or twice this year so far, when we've had the, 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 the Fed basically come forward and like, yeah, the system's broken. And then it kind of ran away. When we hear this out loud, it's very, it's fascinating because you never hear the people at the top say that they've crushed or broken or destroyed something that everyone else is is using. So I guess there was more news. Yeah, the point is, I mean, we, we get a lot of random stuff like this. It's never really relevant, if you will. You know, the UK regulators are, you know, attacking a company for the ad that they placed onto a billboard. Um, but it does make a lot of sense. We We know that the... Um, the system's not going to change. It's not going to get any better. I, I mention this all the time as a joke, but it's just the truth. We're not going to have uh, the people who make and print money and make the laws have an epiphany one day and they go, oh, for the citizens. That's why everyone keeps saying for the citizens. I'm supposed to be helping those people? That's my job? Okay, well, you know, let's, let's, let, let's revamp the entire system to make sure that, that we're actually helping the people. And they, they don't care because they, they, they're, they're in this position of power. Anyway, um, yes, um, look it up yourself. It is it is almost imperative that you do so because it's not just happening within the States. It's, it's not just happening within the UK. It's happening around the world. They are running out of money because people are getting older. And people are going to continue living a lot longer. And where does that money come from? If people already don't have jobs, if people are fired, if automation continues, where does the money come from? Who's going to be paying into these systems? The robots, the self-driving cars that took away the jobs from the truck drivers and the limo drivers and the taxi drivers and the Uber and the Uber and the Uber drivers, probably not. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's just about all the news. Let's move on. Um, as always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gunbite University, Crypto Black Sheep. AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655, and Carlos was like Mobarazi, Jojo Shaw Show, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Bare Bones Mining, Troy Allgood, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Crypto Stahl, Pater Noster, Conan Don't Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Banan, Auspicious, 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 Agile, and Blockchain. What's Auspicious? Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, 
Oscar Maldonado, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Stoyer, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Mohar Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Damien, Setsuna, Richie Rich III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Mint and Coins, Miller, Hitch Test Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day. Yes to Crypto. Bodie McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Arf Medic 17, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger and Macho Nisa on Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to all the new Patreon members. Hello, and all the existing ones. I do thank you for all your support through all of this madness, if you will. Thank you to everyone who left a like. Thank you to everyone who left a comment and or comments. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Hello out there as well. And thank you to everyone who's still here listening to me ramble on. At the moment, Bitcoin is currently at $57,115. Here's the drop right here. I, I just... I assume I have not heard of yet, uh, but I assume we're going to hear sometime during the next day or two that we are in a triangle and we got to break the triangle. It's, it's always something triangular. We're always in some type of a tight range motion until we end up breaking or bucking the trend. But the cryptocurrency market is very, very weird right now. There's no actual direction to anything, which is kind of nonsensical. But according to the 18 articles that we've gone over together over the last five days. Um, it appears as if the cryptocurrency market is poised to make a large jump. Cardano's down by 3%. Everything is 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 down, if you will. Not hyper down, but down. Here's the move up from XRP. And here's the gravitational force of Bitcoin, which also then subsequently caused XRP to also fall back. This is around the time when the news came out, if you will, about them being able to relist XRP, I still don't think they're going to do it. I have a, just a very strange feeling. I, I think it may happen only based off of social pressure. Of people telling them, hey, you can relist this, relist it. But the, the exchanges, it's all about money. If you can make sure that money gets funneled into what you have and what you have listed, well, gosh darn it, you're going to do it. Um, the stable coins are up. Yeah, that's fun. Um, Theta is up by 16%. I'm going to shrug because at this point, I, I know it's not based off of logic. V <laughs> Vitain Tor. Vitain Thor is up by 4.9%. Um, Solana is up by 13.7%. Sure, why not? Tron is up by, once again, not logic. Tron is up by 3%. Here's that same exact gravitational pull on every single coin. Um, Kusama is up by 6. BitTorrent Token, you know, the one that's being adopted every single day, is up by 14%. Anything else crazy? Hadera Hash Bar Graph H Bar Graph Bar is up by 4%. And yeah, that's about it. I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope you have a quick and speedy Monday. If you're at work, I hope it goes by quick. Or hope your boss is like, hey, take the day off. You deserve it. If only that was how life worked. I do hope you... Imagine if it did. I do hope you all enjoy. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening. Wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.